Thank you for joining us today as we delve into the intriguing topic of the Nephilim. Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4 tells us that when humanity began to increase and daughters were born, the sons of God, attracted by their beauty, chose wives from among them. The Lord declared that his spirit would not contend with man indefinitely, for man is mortal, his days would be 120 years. In those times, and even after, giants, known as Nephilim, walked the earth. These were the mighty men of old, men of renown. The Nephilim, often translated as giants or fallen ones, are a source of great fascination. They are scarcely mentioned in Genesis, yet they feature prominently in apocalyptic literature, particularly the Book of Enoch. These beings of unusual size and strength are shrouded in mystery. The prevailing theory among biblical scholars is that the Nephilim are the offspring of the sons of God, fallen angels, and the daughters of men, the daughters of Adam. These fallen angels were captivated by the beauty of the daughters of men and married them, giving birth to the Nephilim, a hybrid of human and angel. However, this theory is not without its detractors. Some argue that spiritual beings cannot engage in sexual relationships with humans. A less spiritual interpretation posits that the sons of God were the descendants of Seth, Adam's third son, and that the daughters of men were the ungodly daughters of Cain. Considering the abnormal size and nature of the Nephilim, it's hard to believe that they were purely human offspring. The Nephilim are undoubtedly supernatural in nature, leading many, including myself and other biblical scholars, to believe that they were the product of angel and human intermarriage. Genesis 4 verses 25 to 26 tells us that after the birth of Seth, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. Some argue that Satan, seeking to corrupt the entire human race after the fall of man, orchestrated the intermarriage of fallen angels with the daughters of men. But the question remains, are some of us Nephilim today? This question stems from Genesis 6 verse 4, which states that the Nephilim existed before and after the flood. How did they survive the flood when the Bible clearly states that only Noah's family survived? Yet, we see the Nephilim reappearing years after the flood. How do you think the Nephilim survived the flood? There are two schools of thought on why the Nephilim reappear after the flood. The first suggests that the Nephilim we see in the Book of Numbers are from another group of angels who came to earth after the flood and committed the same sin as the angels in Genesis 6. However, this is just a theory, as there is no biblical record of a second group of angels committing the same sin. The second theory, as described in an article on gotquestions.com, suggests that Nephilim simply became a semi-technical term for, giant warrior. It may have had some nebulous overtones of mystery. It might be similar to the modern term monster, which can refer to size, an evil character, or even a supernatural creature or hybrid like a vampire, a werewolf, or Frankenstein's monster. With our limited knowledge of the word Nephilim, it appears the Nephilim were gigantic, mysterious warriors of uncertain DNA. Since the Nephilim were mentioned after the flood, could it be that they're still in existence today? What's your take on the existence of Nephilim today? I personally believe that it is very unlikely that anyone living today is a descendant of the Nephilim. The reason for this is that there is no evidence of Nephilim living in our day. If the descendants of the Nephilim are indeed alive on the earth today, it would open a whole host of questions. For instance, can their descendants be saved? Seeing as Nephilim are hybrid creations of humans and angels, there is no teaching within the pages of scripture regarding sinful angels being saved, which would lead us to believe that Nephilim also cannot be saved. The Bible doesn't say angels have a savior or even that they have souls, and Jesus definitely isn't their savior. The author of Hebrews makes this abundantly clear in Hebrews 2 verses 14 to 17. I personally believe that there are no descendants of the Nephilim left on earth. We see in Deuteronomy 2 verses 20 to 21 that God destroyed the Nephilim in the land of Ammon. The Ammonites called them Zamzumim, a great and many and tall as the Anakim, but the Lord destroyed them before them and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. Probably the reason there are no more Nephilim in our day is because the fallen angels have been judged by God. Jude 1 verse 6 says that the angels which did not keep their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The Bible says that because the fallen angels did not keep their first estate, they went outside the jurisdiction of their creation, therefore God bound them with chains of darkness until the day of judgment. What are your thoughts on the judgment of the fallen angels? 